I have seen so clearly how, how shockingly close we are to the end of the world and the second coming of Jesus. And the world does not seem to know it. And I think that my church is failing to put the world on notice. Hear me, hear the preacher. Because the purpose for which the church was exist, uh, has existed is to put the world on notice and to prepare the world for the second coming of Christ. I am going to share some stuff with you tonight. You may need to write it down. It's been recorded so you can get copies of it. How shockingly close we are to the end of time. And I'm going to say to you, if you have not yet spoken to the Lord about your soul salvation, then I leave you to walk out of this tent. I challenge you to walk out of this tent, not doing it tonight. Stay with me. Come with me. The subject of the second coming of Christ has been a popular subject all around. And lots of preachers have prophesied the very day Christ is coming back. So I'm going to start the text. I'm going to start the presentation with the text in Mark 13, 32. R read this text from it. The text says, but of that day or hour, no man knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Hello. Which tells me, if you go to a church and they start prophesy which day the Lord is coming, run. Amen. That's a church full of scammers. So, because nobody knows the day nor the hour. It is important you understand that, you know. Notice the text didn't say nobody doesn't know the year. Or the decade. Or the century. What it says, nobody knows the, the day. No, the earth. And you know, I was, I was researching this and, and it struck me, it struck me. It's like, watch me, it's like, it's like, it's like a woman having, giving birth. And the doctor says, nine months and your baby will be born. Amen? And, and by the way, and you go and you do your prenatal check and they say, yeah, the baby should come in about a week or two. But there's not a doctor on the planet that can tell you which day and what time that baby coming. Am I right? Am I right or am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't tell you exactly when the baby coming. They can only give you an idea. Is the church with me? Yeah. And then I notice something. I watch people dying. Yeah? People slowly dying for cancer. And the doctor says, oh, they may have two or three more weeks left. But not a doctor on the planet can tell you exactly which day or which hour is the last breast. And then it dawned on me that God has kept the day, the moment we born to himself... And the moment we'll die to himself. So what we have is just a general idea. Is the church with me? When it comes to the second coming of Christ, it's the same thing. What God gives us is a general idea. Because the exact day he came as a big secret. Uh-huh. If you understand that, then I'm going to ask one verse six. Because Jesus had some disciples who were very interested in that subject, they wanted to know, Lord, when you're going to set up your kingdom. Here's it. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, help me read. Will you at this time restore what? Kingdom. They want to know when God's kingdom was coming. And you know what the Lord said to them? Here's it. Here's it. And he said to them, in Jamaican language, you're too fast. Here's it. It is not, tell me read, it is not for, hey, hey, it is not for you to know the times or the season which God the Father has put in his own authority. That's a top secret in heaven left to God alone. Amen. Don't pry in it if God given, didn't give you information. So, so, so I decide to scan the Bible 
to see what is the closest information we have about when God is coming. And I must tell you, I found one dege dege text. That's a nice Jamaican word. You all use it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, found, I found one text in the Bible that told me the closest possible time when the world would end and God is coming. One text. Some of you read it but didn't see it. It's in the book of Daniel. And by the way, anything Daniel tell you, you can believe it. Yeah, because Christ authenticate Daniel as a prophet. Yeah, Matthew 24, 15. When you see the desolation of Jerusalem spoken by Daniel the prophet. So God, God, God certified Daniel as a prophet. Amen. Daniel tells you no popular television. All of these TV preachers said they are prophets. And God didn't certify them. God, God certified Daniel. Anything that, and by the way, there's, a, there's another prophet tells me that, you know, if God has any secrets, he always reveal it to his servants, the prophet. <laughs> so I can check Daniel because he's a certified prophet and God tend to give his secrets to the prophet. So I studied Daniel and I found one text. Here's it, here's it. You ready for it? Take a deep breath. Fill your, fill your, fill your brain with oxygen. One text. Here's it. Daniel 2, 44. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did that text say when God is coming? Yes, it's there. Okay, so let me open it for you. Here's it, here's it, here's it. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and it shall stand so the text catch my attention in the days of these kings. That's the first blues clues I got of when the world will end. And so the question you need to ask yourself is, I know with somebody preaching with me, who are these kings? Yeah, 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 I'm happy you ask. Right, we're gonna come back to that. In the days of these kings, the text says, the God of heaven will do what? Set up his kingdom. His kingdom. And when he set up that kingdom, the text says, oh, oh the text says, it shall stand forever. That's what you and I are waiting on. So when will it come? Come on, when will it come? In the days of these kings. So now my job is to tell you what kings those are. Amen. Amen. Are you, are, they, are you guys in the back tent? Are you with me? Good, 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 good. So let's, let, let's, see if we can, let's see if we can dig to find who these kings are. Kings in prophecy represents governments. So, and notice it is the S, a number of them. Number of them. Is the church with me? Yeah, okay, number of them. That was verse, that was two, Daniel 2.44. Daniel 2.45, the next verse says, Inasmuch as you saw the stone which was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces, the iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold, the great God has, of the great God of heaven, the great God has made known unto the king what will come to pass after this. So hang on, hang on. So Daniel, give me a little understanding that the coming of the kingdom is associated with stone. You know my grandma used to sing, Daniel saw a stone rolling in. And by the way, as a child, I used to sing it, and I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue that this is prophecy. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That stone is what we're going to keep our eyes on. Is the church with me? Good. So what I gave you is chapter, four, chapter 2, verses 44 and 45. It is at the end of the chapter. I start at the back end. So now, for you to understand who these kings are in the days of these kings, I have to now go back to the, come on, I have to go back to the front end. Are we together? Good, so let's go there. Let's go there. 
So what, what you have on the screen, the year is 605 BC, years ago. The children of Israel were divided into two kingdoms. Kingdom of Israel in the green. By the way, nice screen. Amen. Yeah, give the, give the administration a round of applause. I don't know where they get it from, but nice screen. Yeah, the kingdom of Israel in green and the kingdom of Judah in red. By the way, that has no political connection. And if it does, and if it does, I'm sorry for the green section because this kingdom was destroyed. <laughs> if it, if it, uh, uh, this kingdom of Israel was destroyed by the Assyrian. So, so by the time we catch up this story, it is only the kingdom of Judah that is left. Is the church with me? Yeah, yeah. And, this, and the capital of the kingdom of Judah is Jerusalem. And, and by the way, and in Jerusalem is a young man by the name of Daniel. Stay with the preacher. Give me the back end of this. At the same time, 585 miles to the east, a new king took over the reign of Babylon by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. Everybody know Nebuchadnezzar? 605 BC, he took his army, traveled 585 miles from Babylon over to Jerusalem, destroyed Jerusalem, burned down the city, captured all the, all the strong men, put them in chains and shackles, and marched them 585 miles back to Babylon. Is the church still with me? Good. It is down there in Babylon that they, they, were, they were tormented uh, to sing. The Babylonian torment them, says, sing for us. And, 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 and they refused to sing. You remember that stuff? Yeah, and that's why they wrote, by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down and there we wept when we remember Zion. And all the wicked requires of a song. But how can we sing Jehovah's song in a strange land? It was here that Daniel was a young man captured as a prisoner of war from his hometown in Jerusalem, come all the way over in the city of Babylon. Are you still with me? So that was 605 BC. In the second year of, that, of the reign of that king, I'm now in chapter two of, Bab of Daniel. That's the chapter we were in. We were at the back end. I'm now starting at the front end. Is it still with me? Chapter 2, verse 1. This is how the story began. And we are searching to find who these kings are that God will come in their days. Answer. Now in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, he had dreams and his spirit was so troubled that he, his sleep left him. Which means that he jumped out of his sleep. Amen. Some of you do that every night. The king, then the Bible says, then the king got up out of his sleep. He made a command to call his advisors. The magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans. You know, you know you're in Babylon when the person who advised the political leadership is a magician. <laughs> Amen. You know, you're, you know you're in Babylon when, when, when the person who advised is an astrologer. Can somebody deal with this for me? Uh, you, know, you know you're in Babylon when, when, when we're dealing with magicians, those guys who work like a magic, those who study astrologers. These are the people who study the star and tell you whether you're going to be rich or whether you're going to be married. And a lot of you pay money for that foolishness. And then they have the sorcerers. These are who know? Oh, you don't know them? <laughs> yeah, they, 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 these are the mother woman. And the seer man, all of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these are, these are. So all of these came together. But the ones that you don't know is another set called the Chaldeans. No, these are the educated ones. They are the formally trained. These are the college professors. Are we together? So the king brought all of them together and said to them, hey, I have a problem. Um, they came and stood before the king. The king says, uh, said to them, I, I've had a dream last night and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. So I brought you here to tell me, uh, to tell me what I dream.
when the team, when the advisors heard that, the educated ones, the college professors, they are the spokesperson for the team. So they spoke up and they said, Your Majesty, O King, live forever. Um, tell us, tell us the dream. Hey, 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 hey. Look, if you ever go to Hobby Man, this is the stuff you need to know. How many have you been to Hobby Man? Not a hand went up. I, I, I plan to go one of these days. I don't reach us yet. So they say, tell, tell us what you dream and we will give you the interpretation. That's how Obi Man function, you know. Same way. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, 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 so when they did that, the king, the king who is smarter than I said, hey, hey, hey. The king said to the child, hey, the thing is gone from me. My dream is gone. So why you bring us here? Oh, we bring you here for you to tell me what I dreamt and then give me the interpretation. Uh-huh. 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 And then, and, and, and when the king look on their face and realize that they start to tremble, the king says, if you will not make known to me, I cut up all of you in pieces and bulldoze your house. And by the way, he's serious. God, there's no human commission, human rights commission to tell the king he can't do it. So they were in trouble. And the king says, however, if you tell me the dream and the interpretation, you'll get all the best gifts in the world. Great honor. Therefore, therefore, tell me the dream and tell me the interpretation. Two things. Two things. I just love this stuff. Then the college professors who are the spokesperson, they said, O King, with all due respect and with all honor, <laughs> help me read. It's a difficult, <laughs> when we put our magic and our sorcery and our astrologers and everything together, it can't work. It's a difficult thing the king is request. And by the way, and by the way, and by the way, there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods. Come on, G. And the problem with them, they don't dwell among us. In other words, in other words, what you're asking us to do is out of our league. And by the way, God did it. God purposely did it. So that they may understand this is out of your league. Yeah, this is higher science. Yeah, yeah, you look at gooby, 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 gooby science now. This is, this is higher science. So God brought the creme de la creme of Babylon and embarrassed them because they are not in God's league. And that's why you mustn't go to fake up your man. Amen. For this reason, the king, hey, 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 for this reason, when the king heard that, the king was angry and furious, and he gave a command, he called up the secretary, he write an order right away, destroy every single one of them. Destroy all the, come on, preach with me, all the wise men. And then I remembered in chapter 1 that when Daniel landed in Babylon, they sent him to the Babylonian University. Amen. And I remembered looking at his GPA. The text says he came out with a 4.0 GPA. He, the text says he graduated summa cum laude. The text says when, when, the, when the graduating class went on stage, Daniel was ten times wiser. Did you read that stuff? Was ten times wiser. Which meant, which, watch a preacher, watch a preacher. Which meant that Daniel was employed in the king's service and was among the 
Wise men. You know, sometimes when you're too wise, put you in trouble. Mm -hmm. So, watch, watch the joke. The command was to kill all wise men. So the decree went, hey, read verse 13. So the decree went out and the text says, they, help me read, they began killing. Did you see that? They already started the killing. They began the killing. And so, so now, uh, and, they, and they saw Daniel and his companion to kill them. Because what it means here for my sis is that Daniel was on the kill list. Is the church with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, pro <laughs> the prophet of God was on the government kill list. And church members need to understand sometimes even though you live a righteous life you may find yourself on the political kill list. Nothing that he did. So they, so they, went, so they went to his house and knock up. Daniel cracked the door and opened. It was Ariak, the general who in charge of the killing. <laughs> oh God, I'm Confirm your name. Are you Daniel? Yes. Okay. We have you on the kill list. And you have three guys who graduated with you. Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. They're on the kill list. Oh Lord, help us in the church. You just don't know when trouble is going to reach you. In the church with me? So Daniel says to Ariac, says, hey, 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 before you start killing, just give me a little, carry me to the king. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, take, take, take me to the king. Before you start, take me to the king. So, uh, so uh, Ariac took him to the king, and Daniel went and to the king, and he asked the king, he says, king, just give me, come on, let me read, give me what? Give me a little time that I might tell the king the interpretation hey 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 king just give me a little time give me a little time give me a little time hallelujah and the king did is the church with me the king did the king did and then the, hey the text didn't tell us how much time he got you know but from reading the text i gather he only get one night hallelujah one night so he rushed back home, he called the three guys together, and he says, guys, we need to go down in prayer and fasting tonight. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But when trouble catch you, the only thing you can do is pray. Yeah. Daniel, remember, there's a word that says, call upon me, and I will answer you. Daniel, remember, dear God is a present help in the time of trouble. They prayed. By the way, that's why you must have friends who pray. Yeah. Songwriter says, I need the prayers of those I love. Surround yourself with people who can pray. So when you're in trouble, you can pray yourself out of trouble. We'll I'll talk about that on Tuesday night. When you pray. So they made, they, 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 they shared the information with the guys at home. Uh, and they prayed that, that, that they might seek mercies from God of heaven. Concerning what? The secret. That's what they're asking God for. No, no, listen, listen carefully, listen carefully. After they prayed, after they prayed, they went to sleep. Some of you pray. And you still can't sleep. <laughs> and you wonder what you pray for. Amen. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, come on. You pray and still uh, pray and worry. What you pray and worry? They pray and when to sleep, they leave it in God's hand. Amen. And when to sleep. When you pray, go to your bed and sleep and know that the Lord will take care of your business. So that morning, that morning, the Bible says, 
the secret, that's what we're looking for, was revealed to Daniel in the night vision. That's why I know he went to bed. Yes. Amen. While he was sleeping, uh, the, the God revealed the secret to Daniel. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Ah, 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 ah. This is my, hey, hey, this is my sweetest, this is my sweetest part of it. So it became clear that God gave Nebuchadnezzar the dream. Yes. Amen. And then delete it. Yes. Press the delete button. Yes. When you wake up, the thing gone. Yes. Now God transfer the dream. Yes. And download it in Daniel's head. Yes. And press the save button. Yes. Hello somebody. Is God running the show? Yes. So when Daniel got up, the whole thing, the whole file was very much in his head. He get up and he had morning worship. He praised God. Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Is a church with me. When God comes through for you, you have to praise God. Hey, Daniel says, God revealed the deep secret and he knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. He praised God. If you pass their room that morning, you'd hear their singing. You hear them singing songs of glory to God. What a mighty God we. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. For heaven and earth. What a mighty God. And when I finish that, I hear, I hear Meshach start another one. He's able. I know. Yeah, I know. They sang. That's why when people come to church to worship God and shout out hallelujah, leave them alone. You don't know what they went through last night. Hello, somebody. They had worship. So, so. After worship, Daniel get dressed and call up the, the general and say, hey, 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 come. Uh, take me back to the king. Oh, Jesus. Hey, hey what, look what Daniel said to the, to, the, to the general who's doing the killing. He says, do not destroy the wise men. Above. In other words, I am asking for a stay of execution. Ha! And by the way, those wise men got their lives safe because one righteous man was in town. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Say, so take me before the king and I will tell the king the interpretation. Uh, my man must say, you have the stuff? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So he rushed to the king. Yeah. You know, some people want the, the reward. <laughs> he rushed to the king. Say, king, I found a man. Who can help you out? So, oh God, have mercy. So he brought Daniel before the king. Hang on, hang on. And the king answered and said to Daniel, Are you able to make the known to me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation? Are you able? And I love how Daniel responded. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, you can know when the spirit of God is in a man, you know. Daniel, Daniel says, King, Daniel says, King, I have the stuff. But sit down, let me talk to you a little. Yeah. Amen. He says, he says, King, the, the secret, see the word come back up again? The secret which the king demanded. What you ask of these wise men, of a truth, they can't handle that stuff. This is higher science. It's out of their league. Hey, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, these guys are playing in the minor league. This is major league. Yeah, 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 you can't handle it. So I, I sympathize with them. Yeah, they couldn't handle it. And then, 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 then he says, but, hello somebody, but there is a God in heaven who reveals what? Secrets. Yeah, there's a God in heaven. And he, he, that God in heaven, has made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Meaning, your dream is not because you have too much yam and dumpling last night. You get, a, you get a nightmare. This is no nightmare. It is God who put that stuff in you. Amen. And why did God? God wants you to know what's going to happen when? 
in the latter days, meaning now. That's how you come in the dream. Mm -hmm. Daniel said the dream is not about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then this thing is fascinating. This one will blow your mind away. Then Daniel, hey, hey, escucha me por favor. Listen to me carefully. Then Daniel went ahead and told the king what he was thinking in his head before he went to bed last night. You know, God can't give us some of that power. If we ever know what other people are thinking. Even underneath the tent tonight, if we ever know what other people think. Here's it. I'm not joking. Here's it. Here's it. This is frightening. Here's it. Daniel says, as for you, O king, thoughts. What? Thoughts. Thoughts came to your mind. While you were on your bed. Hey. What was he thinking about? Answer. About what would come to pass after this. Meaning you went to your bed and you were wondering what going to happen to your kingdom. Yeah, like some of you. What's going to happen to your business? What's going to happen to your children? What's going to happen? So you were thinking about the future. Are you with me? And then Daniel says, he, help me read. He who reveals secret has made known to you what will be. Since you are thinking about the future, God decided to draw the curtains of the future and give you a peep. Hey! Man, if you have a man like Daniel in your church. Ha! The king sit up on his chair. Never in his life has anybody ever told him what he was thinking. So whatever this guy say, no matter what he says, must be true. Is the church with me? Good, 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 good. So Daniel says, this is your dream. So you, O king, you were watching, and behold, a great image, this great image whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. So the image head was made of gold, and its chest and arms of silver, and its belly and thigh of brass, and its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. Daniel says, you watched while a stone was cut out without hands and struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. I want you to note that what Daniel described in the image of head, chest, legs, of, this is the image of a human being. Are you with me? Come, 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 kindergarten children, teacher. Come, kindergarten teacher. If you walk into a kindergarten class, you know you're in a kindergarten class. Why? Why? Charts. Charts. Amen. Teaching aids. Illustration. So God did the same thing. God used a, watch this, a time, this is human. So what God has just showed them is a timeline of human history. It is not, it's not an image of a cow or a mosquito or a lizard. It's the image of what? Man, because it represents the timeline, how much time human beings have left on the planet. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the dream continue. The dream continue. You watched while a stone, that stone we're looking for, was cut out without hand, which struck the image, where? On its feet of iron and clay and broke them. Then the iron, the clay, and the bronze, and the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like a chaff from the summer stretching floor. You don't know what that means. It is crushed up like powder, and the wind come and it blow it away. And the wind carried it away so that no trace of them was found, and the stone that struck the image became great mountain and filled the whole earth. Daniel says, that's your dream. My man was stunned. So
So, I'm going to give you a little sample of what the dream looked like. Are you ready for this? Yes. So you must be sleeping <laughs> with your eyes open. So this is a graphic illustration of what my man, the king's dream looked like. Look at it carefully because it has everything to do with Portmore. Are you with me? This is what the dream looks like. So I can run it for you. So he was dreaming, Daniel says, he watched while he saw this image, stood up, great image. Its head was made of gold. Then you saw the silver, the chest of silver. And then you saw the legs, the thighs of bronze. And then the legs of iron. And then you saw the feet mixed with iron and clay. Then he said you saw a stone coming down from nowhere towards that image, coming to the image, coming to the image, and bam! Hit the image, and the whole thing disappeared. And when that happened, my man wake up out of his sleep. That's the dream you saw. And the stone turned a mountain and filled the whole earth. Okay. So my man is now very impressed. And so he's now ready for what? What are you ready for? Interpretation. So Daniel delivered number one. We now need number two. Right? So, so, so Daniel says, now this is the dream. Now, watch this. Now, we will tell you the interpretation. I, I, I'm running a little late, but can I linger just a little longer here? Because this word gives me trouble. Because as far as I know, it's only Daniel and the king talking. Oh, you still don't get it. Is Daniel alone talking with the king? Daniel says, hey, we will know. We, we, <laughs> we will give you the interpretation. We who? Notice Daniel didn't say, I will now give you the interpretation. No, 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 no. Because Daniel realized the interpretation didn't come from him. Hello, we, God and I. Hello, somebody. When God breaks through for you, don't take the credit. We will give you the interpretation. Okay. So, here's it. Fasten your seatbelt. Daniel says, you, O king, you are king of kings. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. He says, you are the head of gold. Mm -hmm. So God start the timeline from up there. Are you with me? You are the head of gold. You represent that head of gold. Yes, Babylon, the kingdom of Babylon, head of gold. So Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom started in 606 B.C. and ended in 539 B.C. Right? That's the period for the head of gold. Is the church with me? Yeah. Stay with me. Don't let me lose you. Don't lose you. And, and by the way, here's a geographic territory of what Babylon looked like. This little red piece, that's all they had at the time. Okay. Then Daniel says, but after you shall rise another kingdom... Another kingdom, which is what? Inferior to yours. And then another kingdom, a third one of bronze, which shall rule over the earth. Is the church with me? So notice these kingdoms are world power. They rule over the entire earth. Entire earth. No, hang on, hang on, because I'm going somewhere. So just as Daniel said, by 538, new kingdom was in town. The kingdom of the Medes and the Persian. Double, double kingdom. That's why you have two arms, right? They conquered Babylon in 538 and they started ruling unto 331. They conquered Babylon by going underneath the walls of Babylon. There's the river Euphrates run through, run through the city of Babylon. Bab Babylon was a city four squared laid out, 15 miles on each side, to the east, to the west, to the north, and the south. Its walls of the city was about 200 to 300 feet high. I mean wide, uh, um, high, and 87 feet wide. And the river Euphrates run 15 miles through the town. 
And it is that river that they dried up and the soldiers climb underneath it and conquer Babylon. So the head of gold is gone. Is the church with me? We are now down to the silver. It's that same night is when the, wall, the handwriting came on the wall and um, Babylon was no more. So now Medes and Persians took over and they expanded their kingdom this side. Um, stay with me, I'm heading into Portmore. Are you with me? Good, good, good. Then Daniel says, a third kingdom would arise. This is the kingdom of Greece, led by Alexander. They conquered, they conquered the Medo Persia in 331, and they started reigning until 138. Young Alexander died at age 32, according to Daniel's prophecy. And so Greece came and they expanded the kingdom a little bit up this side north. And then Daniel says, there will be what? A fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, like iron crush is everything. That kingdom will break in pieces and crush all other kingdoms. That kingdom, the iron monarchy is the kingdom of Rome. You can check this out in AI. AI can give you all of this information. So Rome defeated the Grecian kingdom in 168 BC. And notice, the Rome was in power until we moved from BC over into AD, which means Rome was in power when Christ was born. And they were the person who helped kill Christ. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rome, Rome big iron. Rome, Rome was the, Pilate was one of those governors of, of, of Rome. That was the time. So you get an idea then that when Christ was here, we are in the, we are in the legs of iron. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Roman power, the iron. And then Rome expanded their kingdom northward to take in the whole of Europe. I'm heading for Portmore. Stay with the preacher. Stay with the preacher. Then Daniel says, whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw iron mixed with clay. Ah, notice I told you who, div who conquered who? Watch me, watch me. This is, this is prophecy, watch me, watch me. So media Persia conquered Babylon. Greece conquered Media Persia. Rome conquered Greece. So who conquered Rome? Nobody. What happened to Rome? Rome imploded. Rome fragmented into 10 different tribes represented by the 10 toes. Hey, are you with me? Rome fragmented into 10 different tribes represented by the 10 toes. That's why Daniel said the, Daniel said the kingdom shall be divided and as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly so part of these 10 kingdoms that came out of Rome some will be strong and some will be weak is the church still with me don't let me lose you because I'm coming to Portmore you are in this dream hang on hang on the kingdom shall be divided, partly strong, partly weak. Daniel didn't say that for joke. Are we together? Yes, yes, yes. So who are these toes? These toes are the nations that make up Europe. Are we together? Are you in church with me? Part of them will be strong and some of them will be Weak, watch me. It is those nations, it is those nations that now form the European Union. Uh-huh. And if you know anything about world politics, one of the problems European Union is having is that some of those countries are strong and some of them are... Hang on. Hang on. Keep your eyes on the Bible. Keep your eyes on the Bible. This is, this is, I'm coming to Port Moore. Hang on, hang on. These are the, these are the ten toes. I, I, put a, I, put a, I put a map on it, the old names and the new names. Like Spain was Visigoths, the old name. New name is Spain. England, Anglo-Saxon, new name is England. The old name in Burgundy and um, for Switzerland. Let me put up there. These are the old names of the ten. These are the new names. We're getting some feedback here. Are, are you with me? Yes, stay. This is important. This is important. Three of these nations were destroyed by the papacy when it's coming into power. Stay with the preacher. Leave seven. These seven 
came together to be the nucleus of the United Nations, with the European Union. Here's what the text says. As you saw the iron mixed with ceramically, they will mingle with the seed of men. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Stay with the preacher. David, uh, Daniel says, some will be strong, some will be weak. We see that happening right now in the European Union. And then Daniel says, here's another identifying mark. They will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere. Hang on, stay with the preacher. In other words, the reason why they are mingling is to try to get themselves together. Are you with me? So what does that mingling, the word seed here refers to sperm. Meaning, meaning, they will, they will intermarry. Ah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The royalties of the various kingdoms in Europe, they will intermarry among themselves. Are we together? So if you know the story, all of them are related. And why do they intermarry among themselves? To, to, to form an alliance, to make themselves strong. Are you with me? Daniel said they will try and do that to try a deer. But no matter what they do, they will never be united. What does that have to do with you in Portmore? Hang on, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Coming, I'm coming. The European Union attempted several times to be united. And Daniel stand in their way. You don't get it, you don't get it, you don't get it. You don't get the preacher, you don't get the preacher. They try an EU passport and Daniel stand in their way. They try an EU currency called the euro, Daniel stand in their way. They try a European court of human rights, Daniel stand in their way. They have a US European army called NATO, Daniel stand in their way. They have a commission and they have a parliament. Everything they try to do, prophecies stand in their way. I would like to send a message to the President of the European Commission. Stop trying! A prophecy stand in your way! Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What does that have to do with you in Portmore? Fasten your seatbelt. As you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere one to another. Just when they thought they had it. <laughs> Just when they thought they had it. Prophecies stand in their way. Out of the blue, England decide, I need to get out of here. Because my currency is too strong. And I'm not giving up my sovereignty. And the shock came. The shock came. The shock came in 23rd of June 2016. England voted to come out of the, of the European Union. And by 31st of January 2020, England pulled itself out of the European Union and shocked the whole world. Yeah. Prophecy of Daniel still fulfilling in our very own lifetime. Yeah. They were so shocked all over the world. The queen, even the queen supported it. The, the, the prime minister of Britain at the time warned them, please don't do that. Nobody listened to him. 2.1 trillion dollar were lost on the stock market. Reverberated around the world. Because prophecies stand in their way. What does that have to do with you in Portmore? The text says, read, they will not adhere one to another. They will try. Hey, notice I'm in verse 43. What verse did I open with? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 43 says, these king, these nations, they will try and try, but they will never come together. Are you with me? So I'm going to ask you now to keep your eyes on the toes. Because if that image represents human life, life timeline, where on the image you think you are? Yeah. 
sitting down in Portmore 2024, where on that image you are. If you, if you, if you find yourself down here in the toe, then wake your neighbor up because this is critical. Here, 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 here the text. You watch while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image where? On its feet. So if you are living at the time of the feet, then it means that stone is coming in your lifetime. Hang on, 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 hang on. When is the stone arriving? When is the stone arriving? Answer. Ah, come back to my opening text. In the days of these, what kings? What kings? Talk to me, what kings? In the days of the European countries, what you see longer than? While they are struggling to be united, God will come in the midst of their struggles. The stone choir members will come while these nations are trying everything to be united. Daniel says, that's the time the stone will roll into Babylon. Is the church with me? So here's a shocker. Here's the shocker. When was the European Union formed? Oh Lord, take a deep breath. Because this is a shocker. Answer. It was founded November 1, 1993, in Maastricht. The founders were the countries, the same toes. Is the church with me? Yes. Go look, look, at the, look on the board. Write that date down. It means, it means, it was not, hey, 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 all eyes on me. Or oh, did, did you guys say this was a class? Yes. School is in session? Yes. All right, all eyes on me. Can you get in quiz tomorrow evening? How lies on me? It means, I'm going to take my time right here. It means, it means, November 1, 1993 is when the toes tried to unite themselves. Are we together? Daniel says, the stone will come in the days of these kings trying to unite themselves as one. Here's a shaka, here's a shaka. It means if they start that stuff on November 1, 1993, God could not come before November 1, 1993. Oh, you didn't get it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm saying God could not come. The world could not end before November 1, 1993. Because the world couldn't end before these stores put themselves together. Because the text says it is when these stones try to put themselves together that the stone will. So now I can preach. Put the headline on, this, on the newscast tomorrow morning. Hey, now I can preach. If you ever happen to be alive after November 1, 1993, look up because the stone is coming. That's why I brought you out here. That's why I brought you out here. If you are alive, after the toes started to unite themselves, look up, because the stone is coming. When I saw that, I put my pen down and I says, God, we need to wake up Port more and tell Port more the stone is on its way. If you have not yet given your heart to the Lord, this is the time to do so. Stop playing fool with your soul salvation because a stone is on its way. You're not playing church here. When I watch a political campaign and see the thousands of people shouting, shouting for political leader, I said, dear God, how many of them know that the stone is on its way? I 
I want to play the dream for you again. By the way, where on the image are we? On the toes. Look where the stone in the image. Just look. Look, look. Just, just look. Find your place on that image. Look where the stone in the image. It didn't hit the head. So if you're up there, you can enjoy yourself. It didn't hit the chest. You don't need to come to church. It didn't hit the thigh. And it didn't hit the leg either. If you live in that time, you don't need to come. But if you're living down at the foot, look, 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 look. Look where the stone. Look, 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 look. Look where it hit. Bam! I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it back for you. Hey, 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 hey. This is, this is the coming of God towards human history. Look where the stone connect with humanity. Where? At the toes of the feet. Where we are located. Which means that God is coming in our time. I want to send you home. So here's my appeal to you. Are we living in the head? No. no. If you were, you could go drink and have fun. Of all the women and the men you want, ain't no God coming. Are you hearing me? Are we living in, in the chest? No, that was way back, Medes and Persian. Ain't no God coming that time. Are we living here? No. You can have fun. You don't need to give your heart to the Lord. You don't need to get baptized. Ain't no God coming. Ain't no world ending. Are we living here? No, no. This was the first coming of Christ. So where are you living? Are you here? If you believe that we are living in the toes, some people said the very toenail, then my message to you, time is gone. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Let me talk to the folks in the camera. Time is gone. If this was a football match, full time is gone. We are now on extra time. Are you with me? Any minute now, the whistle. Any minute now, the whistle can blow in port more. And I want people in prayer. I want my church to understand this. I want church people to go out and tell everybody in the workplace. Give your heart to the Lord. Because the whistle is about to be blown. Any minute now. Any minute now. The whistle will be blown. That's why I came out here tonight. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. God help the preacher. I'm burdened when I study these things. I offload my burden on you. I want to pray for somebody in the tent. Who understand the message tonight. Maybe you used to be in church and something draw you out. This is not the time to leave church. This is not the time to leave church. This is not the time to leave church. Maybe you have been contemplating and you make a decision. This year, I'm going to surrender. My this is the time. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, give your heart to God. Let your name be written up in glory. Watch the preacher. There is only one piece of the story left to be fulfilled. And it is a stone. Are you with me? And when it comes, it's all over by the shout. I want to pray for somebody tonight. If you're sitting in that congregation, you say, preacher, please just pray for me. I struggled for a long time to surrender my heart. I want when the stone come to be right with you. Just pray.
pray for me. In the name of Jesus, pray for me. If that describe you, if that describe you, if that describe you, come, come, come. If that describe you, come, 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 come. If that describe you, preacher, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Wait, preacher, pray for me. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. I'll pray for you. Come, 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 come. Come, preacher, pray for me. I understand the message tonight. Come, come, come. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Hey, when the roll is called up yonder, I want to be in the number. Hey, 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 hey. I struggle too hard out here to go to another hill. Come, come, come. I don't know. I don't know when the stone is going to come. But when you roll into Babylon, I want to be in the number. Come, come, come. Come in Jesus' name. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Come from the back tent. Come from the front tent. The spirit of God bids you come. Don't let your loose hold be lost. Come. No matter what your situation is, come. No matter what your history is, come. Come, come, come. Come in the name of Jesus. Come, come, come. Oh, when the roll is called up. When the roll. Come, come, come. Come. Congregation to stand with me. Congregation, stand with me. Be with the preacher. If you're still down there, you're not too sure about your soul salvation. In the name of Jesus, you may go home tonight and while you're sleeping, the stone rolled into Babylon. If you know all is not well with you, come in the name of Jesus. The preacher, pray for this old sinner. Come just as you are. Come, 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 come. We're going to take the last stanza as we give you a last chance for somebody. Come. 